Uh, hey, my name is Adam Faison. I play Colin in the movie Hellraiser, the reimagining. And uh, Colin is a, a bit of a logical thinker and a voice of reason throughout the movie. And uh, he sort of sets a whole plan into motion to try to help Riley when uh, all hell breaks loose and the box opens up. Hi, my name is Drew Starkey. I play Trevor in Hellraiser. Um, Trevor is somewhat of an ambiguous kind of figure. Uh, he has a lot of odd jobs. Um, currently, though, he's working as an art handler for some pretty shady characters. Um, but he's also romantically involved with uh, our hero, Riley, in the story. And he's the one who ultimately leads Riley to uh, the first configuration, the puzzle box. And then it all it all goes uh, batshit crazy. Um, I was familiar with the original Hellraiser. Um, I'd seen it when I was probably a little too young. I was about eight or nine, um, fully traumatized by the experience. But the I the, the the imagery still I mean it stuck with me for for years and years. Um, so it was great to you know start working on this project and kind of you know be allowed to to revisit those. Um, I love horror. I'm such a fan of horror. Um, and it, it, I, I think especially horror that, that blends genres really well. Um, which, which Hellraiser does. I mean, it's, it's psychological. It's, it's a thriller. Elements of sci-fi. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's everything at once. So, um, yeah, very, very happy that we got to be a part of this. So I was pretty familiar with, yeah, the, uh, the movies, the Hellraiser movies beforehand. Um, I had seen them on this AMC Horror Fest uh, when I was younger and they were fun because they were like, I, I love horror because it's, it felt kind of like an escape, you know? Um, and sometimes literally like in this, this movie, we always try to escape these crazy little Cenobites, um, big Cenobites. They're actually a lot of, them. they're very big. Um, but yeah, so I, I really enjoyed um getting to do this because i love horror movies i think some of my favorites also are like 28 days later um you know uh, uh jacob's ladder um a lot of those ones too and sort of um I, I like kind of what drew was saying too there's this element of getting to blend different genres especially the sci-fi element so we get to see a little bit of the lore um that's not really explained in the in the first one so we get to kind of like get a little window into like what each of the configurations means um through the eyes of riley um the part of this movie that made me excited to be a part of it was uh i guess like all of the action lines and the descriptions when i was reading it it was um so beautiful to see how detailed they all were and how everything just kind of built in the script like it was such a fun quick like adventure of a read you know and then I figured I was like if this is as good on this on the page as it is on screen I'm I'm fucking excited so I was like let's go so and also to see just yeah the character development that they really tried to put into this you could tell that they didn't just want to kill for sport they were like we really want you to invest in these characters yeah, I mean, what what drew me, I had gotten the audition, and I remember getting. I didn't even have the full script, but I remember, you know, getting the sides, and and I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was uh, Ben and Luke really wrote uh, a great story, and and David as well. And um, yeah, it was just so fleshed out on the page and so detail oriented. You know, I think they were really focused on on not so much an origin story, but really fleshing out the, the, the lore and the, and the mythos and, you know, the kind of the aura around this Hellraiser world. Um, so that, that, that was what was tantalizing. It was, you know, it's not, it wasn't so niche. It was, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to reach a lot of, a lot of people, some wide audiences and, you know, uh, I think original fans of the of the movie are are gonna find a lot of things in it that they love, and then I also think new audiences are gonna are gonna watch it and you know gain a lot from it. So, and just the people attached to it. I mean, everybody everybody who was attached from the beginning um, was incredible. So I was I was just excited to work with them.
being directed by David Bruckner was so fun. He's uh, very collaborative and he loves ideas and like spitballing um, thoughts, uh, especially in the beginning process. We had sort of a like a week of rehearsal and all these tests and stunt things. And he was very um, collaborative with us and he's not afraid to kind of get down in the weeds with us and kind of get with us in that level, like of where he kind of wants it to be. And um, I mean, he knew the world so well, but he was also able to sort of be flexible with us being in it and having our own interpretations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Working with David Bruckner is, um, he's, he's incredibly high energy, but patient at the same time. Um, he's so detail oriented. I mean, he, we got to, Belgrade, Serbia to shoot the film about a week before uh, the first shoot day. And, you know, he, we took the time for, for that week to work through the scripts, discuss background. He showed us storyboards and artwork and um, ideas for music and his, his ideas for character. It was like this great gift of a rehearsal time that we got for it. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he, he'll, he'll get down, he will get down in the weeds with you. You know, he's like, he's like, this is what we gotta, this is how we gotta do it. Like, um, but, uh, and he's, and he's hilarious. It's, it's funny cause we were shooting during COVID too. So, you know, he has the mask on directing you. Um, so I just remember like his eyes, like watching rehearsal and his eyes going back and forth and be like, great, let's shoot it. Um, but yeah, incredible. It just, just like the biggest, um he's incredibly intelligent and just cares a lot um really take the time to to kind of sift through and work through it with you the experience of shooting this in belgrade was a lot of fun for me i i felt like i kind of fully embraced myself as a local no i'm not i'm not a local but i i i was started learning serbian while i was there because i just wanted to kind of i really love languages and so and i kind of wanted to like you know, experience like, you know, the cuisine and the like different areas. So I would kind of try to like do little day trips before COVID kind of hit and we kind of had to be a little bit more under lockdown. But it was, um, it was such a fun experience because they're so um, passionate and like uh, driven um, and, and like the, the work that they put into uh, this movie was just really uh, amazing to see. Like they all really just came ready and like um, hungry to just like get down in the trenches and um, their ability to like deal with the flora and fauna there is <laughs> amazing because there'd be like these like murder hornets that would like attack us one day and like these wild foxes and they would just like you know like snatch them out of the air like and you know shoot them away and like they'd be like Mishta you know this is nothing this is whatever like you know this get used to it you know this like is you know flower funnel you know like this fox not gonna hurt you so you know I like that so um I had a lot of fun I learned a lot and I and I made some everlasting memories with the uh, with the locals yeah i was shooting in i mean shooting in belgrade was really really incredible it was such a new i mean none of us obviously none of us had been there before um so it was this brand new place uh a little bit of culture shock but be, like beautiful city we we all we made it a point to all go out and get some really good food and drink some like really good wine um and uh, yeah, it was amazing. The people there are incredible. Our crew was so resilient. Like I, I swear, like they were. It would be four in the morning, and we'd be, you know, on our fourth day of night shoots, and there was just never any complaining. Like they were all just like full steam ahead. Um, yeah, but yeah, but we were. I as a cast, like we were all in a new place, and uh, you know trying to trying to like navigate and get around the city and it kind of mirrored our own experience you know with the characters in the movie too it's like we're in this completely different world we're thrown into the situation we know nothing about uh and all we had to kind of lean on was like trusting each other um and and wine we 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 relied on a lot of wine it was really incredible but yeah definitely we'll go back i want to go back to belgrade for sure let's do it